big bill stack will keep you in the know. In a big bill stack will fix your techie woes. Some will break things, some will bake things, so we're all together raking and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack, come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack, we will show you what to do. Come, we'll hack it till we crack it, and we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Ahoy hoy, and welcome to Bilge Tank 104 Hello. from sunny Sheffield on Sea. <coughs> Wait, it's actually sunny today, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful and gorgeous. For once. I went outside and I burned. <laughs> I burned hard. Cool, yeah. Today we're all about the LED matrices in all forms. Um, we have a Tanya on the chat and a Sandy hiding behind this, not in any way suspicious, straight behind us. Um, I think they were feeling not their best today, so they were kind of like, meh. <laughs> Let the, let the Uber geeks handle it. I don't know where to look right now. We're so surrounded by lights and screens and stuff, and everything's a little bit different. Camera. There Camera. you are. It's, it's hiding back there. Yeah. Very so, I think first thing to mention is today we'll have a lot of flickery looking screens, but they don't look like this in real life. It's just the magic of camera shutters playing with um, yeah, people who have updates. What causes your propeller blades to curve when you film a, a prop plane? And it's uh, the same rolling shutter effect, nice. I guess, isn't it? Checking my beard for falafel juice. <laughs> we had a late lunch. <coughs> <laughs> right, so where do we start? Okay, let's start looking at the range of panels. Uh, what have we got here? We have um, big ones, medium-sized ones, small ones. Two yep. small ones stuck together. Yep. So we work our way up from, from ours and yep. then go up through the scale up to the uh, big one over here. Yeah, we'll get the uh, get the wide angle. There we go. Yep, you're down camera. Oh, sweet. That's pretty good. We've got a screen each. That's really fair. Nice. So, obviously, on the very low end, we've got our own unicorn fat. Mm -hmm. I'm looking in the wrong place again. Uh, this, of course, is something many people will already be familiar with that I can't position under the uh, close up camera because I'm totally out of practice. Uh, it's basically 4x8 RGB, uh, what are these WS2812Bs or something to that effect? Yeah. Aren't they? So they're little tiny pixels with a brain in each one. Or an analogue of that, which is the SK6812? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it could well be SK6812s actually because they are allegedly more reliable. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, those each have their own little driver chip and brain in them, and that is important to note because it's a fairly fundamental difference from all of these other displays we'll be showing you, which uh, have dumb pixels, apart from Unicorn Hat, of course. Uh, HD. HD is uh, one that has dumb pixels, and then all of these other yeah. displays also are just row column scanned with driver chips. So along a similar line we've got Unicorn Hat, which is twice as many pixels. <laughs> that, is, that is twice. This That's is, is going to get complicated scaling, isn't it? So, oh, come on. It's got it's got detail behind. It won't focus on you. Yeah, it hates it, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it's that. Let's try and trick it. I think I've tricked it. Yeah. yeah. So both of these are run from the WS2812 yeah, based so this driver. Is used, yeah. This uses a, a rather complicated <coughs> method of driving. Actually, there's no real method to drive pixels on the Pi that isn't complicated, really. Yep. There is an inherently difficult problem because trying to update kind of 16, 32, 64, 128, and maybe even thousands of pixels is just a hard problem if you want to do it at kind of any, any decent refresh rate. Yeah, and these so, need a fairly constant <coughs> refresh rate, don't they? Yeah, these use a, a slightly crazy setup whereby they... As far as I understand it, they prime a an area of memory with a bunch of bytes that are very carefully formatted with ones and zeros, so that when they're output via the PAWM engine, they will cause pulses of a predetermined width. Yep. So that it's effectively ah, oh, how would you? It's a DMA transfer, isn't it? Yeah, it's a DMA. So you're <coughs> very rapidly transferring these bytes out of RAM that are very specially formatted to create a certain timed signal. Yep. And it's it's like sweeping like a row of coins off at the end of a table or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it uses hacks. Yeah, it uses hacks. <clears throat> it uses a lot of hacks. So there's a time early on when people said, "Oh, the Pi will never be able to run near pixels. It can't do real timing like that." There are now three different ways to do it, if not four, I think. So yeah. you can do it through SPI using the same technique of specially formatting. You could do it through the PCM hardware using the same technique as is done through the PWM, because PCM is effectively PWM, just slightly different in, yeah. in interface. And you could also do it 
according to Gordon Henson through the UART <laughs> by just outputting the data, timing how long it takes to output, and if that falls outside of a certain range, doing it again and again and again until you get the signal right. Okay. So you're timing like the summation of your signal. I don't know how well that. So works. various ways the Pi community have said, "Hold my beer." <laughs> yes. <coughs> Speaking just of which, the challenge you've made this. I found this last night. We were at the Hackaday Tindy meetup. <laughs> me and Tanya representing, and we found Pirate Life Brewing Beer Co. thing in a really natty colour. I do like that colour. It's, it's it the looks blue like, and orange again. Blue looks like Ford F40 racing colours, is it? Ford GT racing colours. Anyway, yeah, I'll be trying that IPA later. That's nice. Not at all live, depending on how well the demos go. So, moving on from WS2812 Bs and SK6812s, we've got the Unicorn Hat HD, which is never going to focus. Ah! Mm -hmm. uh, these pixels aren't smart in any way, shape, or form. They are kind of individual packages, each with three individual LEDs, and the package has three pins to drive the LEDs and then one common pin which uh, in this case connects to ground presumably or power yeah I'm not sure. sure if they're cathode or anode uh, I don't know I can't remember from day to day which one is positive <laughs> as well positive is anode no no there's, there's, I haven't come up with a satisfactory mnemonic for it so I just yeah. can't remember well, I'm one what of those people happen. who can't do east west left right reliably <laughs> Left is easy because you hold up your hand and it's, oh wait, and it's, if it's in the TV it's not. It's an L. <laughs> oh. It doesn't always work. So yeah, this, uh, this steps up the number of pixels and also moves across to actually having a built-in driver chip or having a separate driver chip. So the driver chip isn't built into the pixels. It's a separate array of a microcontroller on there, an MCU. Yep. And I see some positive and negative row column line drivers. So you've got your... Actually, no, which is, is which. Shift registers and a load of um, FETs. Ah, and see, an arm yeah, chip. Yeah. yeah. And this was basically, this was Nico's test card. Nico, our head of engineering, <coughs> and this while Finn, um, he decided to try Python scripts with Eagle files um, just oh. to lay out the, <laughs> uh, the routing on this. And this was the result, and we all went, it's crazy, it can't be done. And he said, yes, it can be, and nothing melted. So that's how we got a 16 by 16 matrix in the hat format. It's, it's, <coughs> it's very nice. Yeah. I like it a lot more. It's fairly clear to see why it's nicer than Unicorn Hat, just at a glance, because the pixels are cased in this nice black packaging, mm. which just makes the thing look better somehow. And that translates through to these displays, which not only have them in black packaging, but have this moulded plastic yep. over the top. So, Ooh. yeah, here we go. This is the cutover point. So, yeah, this is transfer from our our built-in pro our, our first-party products to basically the same technique as is used in Unicorn Hat HD. Yeah, but in bigger kind of displays with more pixels. In fact, this is four times Unicorn Hat HD. So, Unicorn Hat HD is four times Unicorn Hat, and <laughs> then you got four times Unicorn Hat HD. Yep. As I've got that one over there. Yep. This one Either of is those. then four times that, presumably, or something mm -hmm. heinous like that. Uh, you get to the point where, yeah, it's a smaller package, densely packed, and it's just getting ridiculous. But yep. yeah, these, these use the same premise. They are dumb pixels with a smattering of row column drivers on the back. And uh, in this case, it's not an MCU. It's actually just all shifted out, isn't it? Yep. So you're driving one end of the chain of shift registers, and then the other end of that chain of shift registers comes out of the other end of the uh, connector here. But we'll see the downside of that in a bit. <laughs> yeah, quite <coughs> so. The reason we get a hold of these is these are used in their thousands in big displays, jumbotrons, massive concert displays. They get used a heck of a lot on buildings. So these are modular for a reason, then, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. They, they daisy chain, they're modular, they have good mounting points. Um, they expect to be replaced often. They actually come <laughs> with um, magnetic mounts. <laughs> what, literally, so you can just go, chunk, chunk, yeah, whip it out. Put two cables, chunk. and out it comes, yeah. and then you, you drop in your replacement. So yeah, you can see that. I mean, that's fairly significant plastic housing around there, and it's pretty weighty as well, and mm. fairly robust. So these are designed, kind of, not for bedroom use, effectively. <laughs> these are a serious business. Yep. Right, so we've got two ways of driving this, um, both from Adafruit. They kind of leaked on this, because Adafruit's game is so strong at the moment. 
Halo 3 were always good, but this last year they've just been so <laughs> with their kind of game. And they have two hats. They have the Matrix hat, which has a real-time clock on it for reasons. This puppy here. Why Why does it have a real-time clock on it? Nobody knows. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess, why not, I suppose. Mm-hmm. It's about because technically there's there's really not that much on here otherwise. Uh, well, it's yeah, it's, it's the power. I think the power management, um, some really odd connectors, the RTC, <laughs> and if you look on the back of it, I think there's practically nothing. Yeah, it's completely blank. Yep. So yeah, Fantastic. you've got your uh, you're pulling your five volts out there to the display panel, unless you're putting in another power supply in there, in which case. No, that regulates it to 5 volt anyway. Yep. In fact, no, that's not a regulator. It's 5 volt DC input as well. Yep. I think it, it maybe gets regulated. Who knows? Anyway, um, this will drive any of the 32, 32 or 32 by 64. This won't drive the 64 by 64 because I believe it doesn't do the addressing quite right. Oh. I don't know why. There's so reasons it needs apparently. More pins. Um, it needs different drivers maybe. But for that, there is the Adafruit RGB Matrix Bonnet. So wait, the Matrix Bonnet does 64 by 64, but the hat doesn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. There are reasons. I'm sure the hat will get an update when it comes for a refresh. Um, I guess but you see there, because the bonnet is newer than. That's what's running here. In real see. life, that's actually glitch-free. You don't see that strobing effect. I can I can confirm this. And the colours look rich and not washed out. That's just because it's damn bright. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So there's one running there, and you can see some of the glitchy effects there. And what we have here, this is running on a Pi 3B Plus. Um, it does not run from a 2.5 amp power supply. You need a supplementary yeah, 5 volt power supply. Yeah, um, so you've got your power in there. Uh, <clears throat> if you look on the shop... This under here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for our 5 volt power supplies. <laughs> we have a 3 volt barrel jack power supply. There we go, 5 volt, 3 amp power jack supply. Jack. It's getting a bit loose actually. Ah. They're currently on sale for just four pounds, and these are ideal for these matrices. They will drive that 64 by 64 quite magnificently. This is getting rather warm. <laughs> Which bit? The uh, input regulation stuff. Yeah. I imagine the Pi is sucking up quite a bit of power to do the uh, the demo the there. In the demo. And that's running Adafruit's demo code with the Speedy Cube. So and you see, this is how easy it is to connect up. It comes with those two wires. The grey one with the red stripe is the data. The thick black and white, black and red ones are the power taps, mm. and they're keyed, so they're hard to get backwards. <laughs> Where are you going, Phil? Yeah, that's a lot and the end of the spade is just going to the screw terminals on the bonnet or the hat. And you can see we've got a purple wire there, which is just <laughs> the bridging. Wire, yeah. It's bridging pins. What it's is it? Four and eighteen? Four and eight? It's basically so you don't have to disable your audio and I think it bridges what is it? Pin four and eighteen I reckon. It is four and eighteen, yeah. Yeah. Actually, and this just allows the sixty four by sixty four to work harmoniously. That's nice. Yeah. That power supply comes with the international adapters as well, which is handy. Ooh, cool. So there you go, hold on that and the connection is basically the same. And each of the, as you can see, each of these boards has an input and output, and that's how you daisy chain them. So let's go through each of the panels on the close up there. I'm going to switch the close up to the big screen and then just kind of panic about the little <laughs> screen down here. Why are you not work? Okay, yeah, let's take. There we go. We're small, Phil. Are we small? We're small. Everything's small. Right, that's the smallest one. We're looking at here at two different things, really. We're looking at how many pixels are on there, how many LEDs are on there, and what pitch they are, what size the individual LEDs are. So let's start with the 32 by 32 six millimeter pitch. Six millimeter. Is that so the big, the big daddy? Big, big daddy. Yeah. The big daddy. Oh. This is only 32 by 32, but much larger than the other ones. Ooh. My eyes go funny looking at that. Uh, let's see how close this will focus in. Surprisingly yeah. close. We've got the microscope as well. Do we need it? Oh. <laughs> Only if we go really, 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 really close. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, that is very many 
<laughs> leave these. Yep. So that's eighteen pounds. That's the cheapest one. And for that many pixels, that's an absolute bargain price. That is uh, completely bonkers. And then obviously over on the back, you've got your which one's the input? Oh, that's the out. But yeah, the input connector. <coughs> the thing is, because there's a few manufacturers, and because they come from all over. You will get batch to batch differences, and I think I've actually got two different 64 by 64 panels here Ooh, have we? that we've received from the same spire. But we'll get onto those. <laughs> Let's well, do that's the 32. An interesting thing, because if you're building them into a product, if you're building a chassis for them or something, and Sh the yeah. connectors are not aligned, then it might matter a little bit. But little generally, bit they make allowances when you're yeah. bolting these things together. Basically. I think they have uh, something 75 hub 75 written on them usually. Which this one doesn't have, so <laughs> <coughs> I've made myself a liar already. Don't. Okay, what going on to the next, next one. <coughs> Somebody's asking about power draw. Um, generally, we say assume that each LED will draw up to 60 milliamps. In practice, it'll probably be a fraction of that, maybe 20. But I'd budget your power supply for a lot more than that. So 60 milliamps per LED times it by <laughs> 1024 or 4096. Ah. Mm. <laughs> right, four millimeter. So this is twenty-four pounds, um, and it's the same number of LEDs, but they are much teeny tinier. Yeah, so it is. Eep. I always go a bit funny trying, stuff. To, trying to figure that out. Yeah. So there you go. A bunch finer. I think you can pack more of these into a, a similarly sized display. Yep. And uh, get high definition. <laughs> HD, yeah. We do that joke totally. I think they're, it's about one and a half times, like the larger one is about one and a half times the size on a side, so. Mm hmm. They're trying to think out what your DPI would be. Yeah, we can probably just measure that <laughs> physically. You really can, can't you? Yeah. Okay, the next one is same pitch as the 32 by 32, but two of them glued together. And you save yourself a few quid, they're £45. So that's a sensible way to go if you're building, I suppose... If you can see almost these, exactly where they're welded together. Yeah. If you, you tilt it, Phil, you can see the weld in the plastic. You can see that line running there. Yeah. But instead of £48, you pay 45 And they've just bust the two boards together in the middle there, so you don't have to have <laughs> your input and output connectors. In fact, how are they even connected together, I can't see. Magic, Phil. Pure magic. There is just a... It's just a bus running straight across the, the PCB at the back there, it just runs all the way across. Ah, I can't. All the way, Phil. Backwards. No, can't hey. get it in. Do, 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 Oh, God. It's got a red dwarf. Yeah. <coughs> like, none of these have said Hub 75 yet. I'm feeling... Oh. I, I'm utterly failing to... Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, I can just see the joins underneath the middle there, the bus. <laughs> runs between the two two panels, but yeah, there's a clear join at the front. <coughs> yep. And it looks like there's a there's like a oh, look at it edge on. So you've got your plastic frame that reinforces the back. Then you've got your PCB sandwich there in the middle. You can see quite clearly edge on. And then you've got these uh, really Grills. nice cut kind of uh, plastic overlays. That are then screwed down with these tiny, tiny screws over the top. So that's two, two kind of identical plastic overlays that have been screwed on top of the PCB. There. Sorry about people's eyes. This is properly confusing right here. Yep. And then we have this. The reason we did the show today, apart from not being ready for the airplane wing show or the <laughs> Things Network show, because we've now got our oh, first no, Things Network. Happening? Any any key? Where's the any key? <laughs> Press something, Phil. I'm pressing everything. Wait, is that the TV? No, it's, that's the TV. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's right. Ah. Any key? No. <laughs> oh, Professionals dear. with professional gear. Oh. Right. Oh, so what we've got nice. new is we've got these 64 by 64 panels in, and they are again 45 pounds, including VAT for Her Majesty's Gov. Mm. And they, they are, yeah, they are teeny tiny. They are yeah. teeny, 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 teeny tiny. Let's get those up on the microscope, Phil. There they'll be fun. 
Oh, oh, wow. So you can see the diffuse plastic there. Nice matte black package. And then the individual contacts for where the taps go for each of the LEDs. Through the diffuser? I don't think so, no. <coughs> that is crazy. Yep. There's no, there's no little grid between these, I don't think, is there? Not like the other ones. Maybe They're that's just... where they save. How are they packing them so densely? Well, the Unicorn Hat HD is not far off. If you want to put it next to it. Go on, Phil. Let's see if I can get that in there. So the Unicorn Hat HD is a little uh, more generous. Let's try and get it edge on. Yeah. Where, where is it? Where is it? Oh. Yeah. So I think Nico can get those closer, because they look like slightly smaller pitch. And less diffuse. So you can see the bond wires there, going from pad to pad. Nice. Wow. But yeah, the difference in how tightly packed these are. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's crazy. Cool. Let's stick the close-up down in the corner there. And <laughs> have us back big again. <coughs> so that's great. Ooh. Now, the first thing when Sweet I saw night. these, when I was out in Japan oh. last year, I got to meet uh, Joe, Seth, from Pico 8 Lexalawful, who was a really super nice guy. Yeah. I had a little cafe in the, on the outskirts of Tokyo, where he just kind of is gaming and just all kinds of things, and just a very chill place. And he does Pico 8, and also Voxatron. Voxatron's the first one that I tried out, I remember that. Yeah. Quite grabbing it early. And but Pico so 8 is, is meant to be a fake retro <laughs> game system. That you program for it has fake um, limitations in there it's to emulate. It's a really nice idea, and it's yeah. amazing what people have done with those limitations. I think <coughs> I think Dank Tomb still uh, remains one of my favourite because it's just so visually distinct and, and visually interesting. Yep. And it, it just has these really cleverly um, created dynamic lighting effects. So that while you're moving through the tomb, you're carrying a lantern, and you get like this flickering radius of light and shadows projected as you move around. It's just, yep. It's, Really good. The whole thing is based around 128 by 128 pixels, though, Ooh. which is in the range of kind of the big panel, 16 of those. And at that point, I kind of went, aha! <laughs> and eventually, I want to make that into kind of a, a proper kind of display with a fake 80s portable TV frame on it, wood, <laughs> all painted up. But in the meantime, we have the. Oh, Tanya's up here for the big reveal. We made something we take to shows to emulate that and play Pico 8. So, without further ado, Take it away! What, what? Oh, you're, uh, you're not supposed to show your fourth hands on air. So with much flickering. So this this is what we build. Now with days, this is 16 displays daisy chained, and you're only really supposed to do three or four for the time it goes a bit skew with. Yeah, this is um, actually this, while we've got it on the uh, chair. Let's uh, take a little peek behind the scenes. <laughs> Oh, wow, well, you can really hear the fan. Speak a horror, horror bit, Rob. <laughs> yeah. The, the, so you can see the, the daisy chaining here of the rows and columns and the power going to a power supply in here. So that's a junction box there and it goes down to a 5 volt 60 amp power supply which is then connected to the mains in an entirely yeah. safe way. Yes. It's actually, no, it's pretty good. We've got ducting. It is, it is very good. We've got <laughs> cables rated for 60 it. amps or more. Yeah. It is. And a big fan in there going, oh, I'm burning! It's a serious job. And then a little pie up in the corner. So a single pie with GPIO is kicking out all those pixels in PWM, PWM fashion. It's crazy, isn't it? It's, it's so on the edge. Because you shouldn't be able to daisy chain 16, especially with this kind of cabling. I think we're probably taking out one of the digital TV channels with the uh, <laughs> PMC from this. Yeah. Anyway, do you want to show a little no. bit about how Pico 8 works? Because it's got the game programming built in, hasn't it? I I have not explored the Pico 8 game programming as much as I should have, so I'm totally in the dark about it. But we can hopefully get into. There we go. Uh, oh no, I didn't want to do what that. What do you do? It's just gonna play it again. Yeah, it did. So there's a big cross down the centre of this because I think Sandy and Phil got their dimensions ever so slightly wrong. I think for reasons. It is slightly out. Yeah. How? Yeah. What? Why did resetting the cart completely break it? I don't know, Phil. What did you do? I'm going to... 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 I
Interesting. Yeah, bum data makes interesting things happen with the shift. <laughs> yeah, when I first plugged it in, just red lines straight across the screen. Bizarre. Mm. Come on. Is it coming back, Phil? <clears throat> Have you, in fact, ruined the cable or Slight something? Error. No, I don't think so. All I did was touch the keyboard and exit. Or reset we can hope it. And that just blew it all up. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Hey, there we go. <laughs> you can actually see kind of how it works uh, from the glimpse of the startup there. Yep. Uh, in that it's using frame buffer coffee to actually copy a portion of the frame buffer and then output that onto the screen. So it's uh, it's definitely not the most efficient way of doing things. I mean, the, the right way to go about this will be to have Pico 8 drawing directly into a frame buffer that's then sent to the screen yep. rather than have it uh, drawing into the main frame buffer. But I think you have to have it drawn into the main one because it's 3D accelerator. I don't even know if this uses a GPU, actually. There's it reasons, does yeah. Not. Uh, so now we can we can attempt to ex attempt to go in fact let's let's quit out and okay. go into you can actually see the code here so the idea is it's very much like a, a retro computer of your and old where you have uh, your code behind the scenes <laughs> and this is uh, what is it LUA I think yeah it's flickery slightly less in person it's it worse is, on the telly it is quite considerably bad on the telly. The yep. thing is, it's much more readable up there, but it has a slight <laughs> delay. So I'm reading it off there with a bit of a flicker. Can you show the sprite editor as well? Oh, how do we get into that? I don't know. Uh, we've got a mouse cursor there, but... No I mouse, can't. so... Yeah. No mouse. Oh. Cursor on. Maybe I should get a mouse and plug it in. Uh, don't worry about that. No, we'll look at it another time. Anyway, you can look anyway. at Pico8, P-I-C-O-8 on the internet. So let's uh, load up a game. This cool. is what I was talking about earlier, and I can't play with the delay. And it just looks, it looks glorious. It looks so much better in person. I think we'll uh, we'll take this down to Pi Wars for people to play with. <laughs> See if we can get it hooked up to oh, a joystick. Hooked up to a Pi K joystick, definitely. Yeah. Did I just fall off a cliff? That was very clever of me. Uh, how do I? Oh, okay. Yep. I am not allowed to take that. <coughs> so Pico 8 has pretty strict limits on sprites, resolution, stuff like that. It tells you if you're over Ooh. overburdening the processor. Yeah. And it's just damn cool to learn rudiments of game programming design in a way that's kind of, I don't know, it feels a bit more fun than Scratch in many ways. So what we've got underfeatured. The thing, yeah, you can actually encode the games in the image files showing the preview of the games. What? There's some way of storing, it's one of the... Uh, what is it, steganography? It's, yeah, I think it's just the meta fields, but you can, you download the image and then you can use the image in here. But I need to look more into that. Mad. Oh, here we go. So this is pseudo 3D, isn't it? Well, all 3D is pseudo, I'm sure, but... <laughs> <laughs> in what is essentially oh, 2D God. frame buffers, they've... Uh, no, uh, what is it called? Uh, FX cart here. <laughs> and there's a great community around writing games, and I think some of these, some games that have been started development on Pico Eight, have broken out to kind of Steam. Is Celeste the one you were playing, Sandy? Yeah. That started life on Pico Eight, didn't it? Yeah. Is yeah. that yeah. broken out to Steam now? Yeah, it's on I Switch as well, mate. I have no idea. I found it on Switch, yeah. and then it frustrated me greatly, because it's very roguelike and unforgiving. <laughs> cool. Ten Rogue is where it was all at. Yeah, so this, I think we put the price of this at something north of £500 to assemble this whole thing. Although with the new 64x64 64 64 panels, you could do this with four panels and make it about yay big. And that would make it a lot more affordable. Hey, there we go. Celeste. So you can get the, the kind of full fat version of this on uh, Switch now. Ooh, did it say something about needing to update? Future future version, please update. Ooh. I think it's a slightly older version of Pico. Yeah, that was the oh, like the music editor. It's got a music editor as well. It's just amazing. And the limitations really help you do something. <laughs> that's that's the thing, isn't it? I think <clears throat> you kind of need limitations to to inspire you to find creative solutions around problems. What, what yeah. is this? 
Mm -hmm. I might make a more portable version of this with the 64 by 64 panels. Yeah, this is, uh, as we found when we uh, took this out to set it up today, it's not the most portable thing. It doesn't travel particularly well. See, that runs really well, even on the TV. I have no idea how I did that. <laughs> am, I, am I doing this? Whoa! <laughs> Bye. It's gone. Cool. Right. So I think that's all we want to say for now on the displays. Uh, Adafruit have good code to go with it. It keeps getting updated a bit as new panels come out, but it basically works. Um, and they do things like the digital sand demo with it, which is... Next oh, level good. Yeah, that was what the, everyone wanted to recreate, basically. Where yeah. you've got a, Just a, need an accelerometer, accelerometer yeah, and yeah. A, a basic physics demo. Mm. Physics are back. <laughs> remember, remember when they were big on the iPhone and everything with Angry Birds, etc. Mm. Why do both directions turn? I really. Oh, it's because <laughs> it's so delayed on the screen that I'm I'm getting the feedback from me pressing the previous direction. That's delayed on the TV, not on here. Really, you look closely, you can just see the individual RGB elements and get a slight radiant warmth glow thing. <laughs> I can't tell what I'm avoiding because when you look <laughs> directly at it, it's quite hard to see what's there. Oh, I can see what's yeah. closed. You it's need beautiful. to be a little bit away from this in order to use it effectively, I think. Therein lies the problem. Yeah. I think what you need is a, a wireless controller, wireless 5K controller somehow, and sit it on one side of a room and then have people play it from the other side. <laughs> it would just about look proper then. I cool. Well. Yeah. Dog. So that's the thing. Ooh, we this is actually past pat testing as well, because we had to do it for a new scientist. Uh, yeah. So Excellent. it surprised us as much as anyone. Excellent. Cool. Right. I think we've only got two more things to kind of have a quick look at. These are products that will be on the shop imminently. Um, mm -hmm. Let's put those on the close-up camera. People have to guess what this is. Yeah. So if you want a second while I just get us back on the bottom corner. This oh, is... Tilt it away from the light so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, there we go. So this connects our small Pi Zero 5 megapixel cameras to the normal Pi camera socket. And they'll be fairly thrifty and cheap, but if you wanted a kind of budget camera hooking up to your normal Pi, rather than the Pi Zero, this will change that small connector into the Pi's normal one. And you've tested that today, haven't you? Yes, I have indeed. And it's been all good. And if you look at this month's Hackspace magazine, they do have a little feature there on the small cameras which is no the other side there but this will allow them to connect to the pie as well the other thing we have here is this very wide angle oh. <laughs> almost fisheye pie zero camera which has a, a kind of a, a lens assembly on it which allows for easier focusing yeah. says phil failing to focus on the much more expensive Camcorder. I can't even see your hand in there. we go. Yep. I don't have to hold my hand in the middle of it. It has more like a CCTV lens, and it means if you want to focus it, you can do it a lot more easily rather than using the white plastic or just breaking, the breaking the glue. That is causing it to. <laughs> oh! There we go. Now I can do it on the gaff tape instead. So, yeah, you basically just grab that little end, and it doesn't require. Wrenching to unstick or anything, it's just or removing glue, a, a screw thread focus lens that's <coughs> on top of the main camera. And you can actually unscrew it all the way off. Obviously, that's uh, yeah, these will be down at Pi Wars, so come and see me. There's not a massive stock, but that's probably the first place. Got some pretty good macro results with this lens as well, actually, by screwing it kind of quite far out and taking yep. photos. So you can get pretty good close ups. Cool, it's uh, surprisingly effective, yeah. Your nails are actually quite neat. Shh. You truly are a well-groomed man, Phil. <laughs> but not glittery. Not glittery. Not we can glittery. fix that though, can't we? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You have to have neat nails if you're being a hand model like this. I've got to say, today you've got the nice white trousers on, white chinos on that shirt. You do look like a club owner in Miami Vice. It's amazing. <laughs> so I think glittery nails would be glittery perfect. Oh, As opposed oh. to cut-rate ninja pirate. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There's a beauty. Good cuticles. Yeah.
So I think that's all we have on offer this week. Uh, check out the new products. Um, Indubitably. Start getting your plant hacks out for the summer, spring. Start planting. Start putting cameras and sensors on them. If, if only I could make something that would cause me to pay enough attention to plants, not to ruthlessly kill them every time I try. Well, that's a, that's why we've got tech, Phil. Actually, keeping a coriander plant alive, if anyone could make that completely automated, that'd be great. If I could have an unlimited supply of coriander. Mm-hmm. Some sort of sealed unit that just harvests the top off and dispenses it. You have little coriander bags. It just chops it up on the way as well. Just, yeah. you just get your chopped coriander out. Chop coriander, yeah. please! And then it has kind of a cut out of the Turkish guy, just kind of... <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Right. Indeed. Until next week, folks, where we'll be talking about either the airplane wing <laughs> or the wing tip. I haven't seen the wing in the flesh yet. <laughs> I might need to go and have a look at that. Or talking about the things that work. I think that depends on us getting the PyCom stuff back in stock. And the 85... <laughs> so you've got something to see if it works. Yeah, the 900 megahertz um, LoRa modules. LoRa feathers. Because they should be able to connect to the things network with a couple nice. of hacks. Yeah. Right. Cool. Take care, folks. And keep watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>